Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for being here today. I appreciate you joining in. And I'm really excited to um, go over today's drawing uh, project for you. So before I jump into what we're going to be working on, I'm just going to give you an overview of the materials I brought, just in case you need a moment to grab something else. Or if you're still getting kind of set up, you have a moment to um, get all your materials ready. Um, so I have everything that came in the fall uh, 2023 box. Um, so we have um, an ink brush, we have two paint brushes, we have a detail and an angle brush. Um, we have the Creta Color graphite drawing pencil. This is an HB pencil. We're going to be talking a little bit more about pencils um, as we work on our project today. Um, the set of core watercolor pans. We're going to be using these paints today. And then um, the Hannah Mule Agave watercolor block. Um, this is the hot press paper. Um, so those are the items that came in the box and you should be pretty familiar with by this time. Um, but I'll show you, I have a couple extras. Oh, and one other thing that came in the box um, before I forget is also this collapsible water cup, which is amazing. Um, and I've had so much fun using this. Um, so I do have uh, my water cup here as well. So I'm just going to go over the extra things that I brought in case you need to grab something. Um, you're welcome to do that. Um, so I have some paper towels. I always keep those handy. You can also use if you have an old washcloth or dish towel, you can use that as well. Um, just anything where you can sort of dry off and wipe off your brush is helpful. Some type of palette. Um, so I'm using, um, this is just a tray. You can, it doesn't have wells. It's just a big uh, surface area to mix paint on. Um, but if you have the kind with wells, that works well. Um, if you don't have any kind of palette or tray at all, not a problem. Um, there's one that comes in this little travel kit. So it's perfect. Um, if you need to mix your paint somewhere, you can mix them right in here. Um, I also have a second cup of water. Um, so I, I think both of you have, or all three of you have um, joined maybe in the past, but if not, I usually like to keep a second cup of water. So I'll explain that a little more as we go. Um, but I usually like to have two water cups with me. Um, I have some washi tape. I always just keep that handy in case I need to tape something down um, or if I want to uh, tape the paper to keep uh, paint off of a certain area. So I always keep that handy. Um, I have an eraser. This time I just have a hard rubber eraser. Sometimes I like to use a kneaded eraser, but for this drawing, I'm gonna be using a hard eraser. Whatever you have is fine. And then the last thing that's um, a little different is I have a, a sketching set of graphite pencils. If you don't have a whole set, that is perfectly fine. You don't need the whole set. Um, but I would say um, as long as you have an HB, which is the same kind of pencil that is the creative color pencil. So if this is all you have, that's totally fine. You can use this pencil for the whole thing. Um, but if you have sketching pencils, um, I would say using at least a 2B pencil um, in to pair with the HB pencil is good. Um, but you can use, if you want to use the 4B as well, you can use that too. Um, so you can do a full graphite drawing, or you can just do a really simple one. And we're going to talk about that a little bit once we get into the actual drawing process. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of everything that I'm going to be using today. Um, and if you have any questions about materials, feel free to put that in the chat and I'll be happy to, to go over that with you. Um, so uh, if you checked the mix group, um, I put in for our class prep, a reference image that I'm going to be working from. Um, and I'm going to pull that up really quickly on, on my iPad just to give you a refresher of what that looks like. Um, so we have this really cute uh, winter bird that I found on Unsplash, which is um, a really great resource for royalty-free images. So if you're ever looking for um, a reference picture, Unsplash is a good one. And then there's another one called Pexels. So sometimes I'll get my reference images from there. Um, but this is what I used uh, as a reference for my drawing. So this is what my drawing is gonna look like. And I'm gonna keep the reference handy um, off screen because I want to be able to uh, get a look at the different values and some of the colors that are going to be in this drawing so that I know what to do for 
uh, when I add my paints and my pencils. But I want to show you a really uh, quick trick that's really helpful if you're doing a graphite drawing um, or a black and white drawing from something that's in color. Um, so I'm using an iPad, but any photo editing software will work, even the stuff that's default that comes with your computer. Um, the trick is being able to take out the saturation, which means you're just taking the colors out. So I added a, a layer on uh, Procreate that's a saturation layer that takes out the saturation. So you'll see now it's black and white. And the nice thing about doing that is it allows you to see the range of values a little more clearly. So you're not getting confused by colors because colors have a value assigned to them as in lightness and darkness. But it can be really challenging if you're kind of new to figuring out how to translate colors to black and white and vice versa. Um, so it's really helpful. You can kind of just make it easier for yourself if you turn it to black and white. Um, so that's just a little tip I wanted to share when you're working from um, a reference image that has colors and you're working in black and white uh, on, on your drawing. So I'm gonna set this aside. Um, and then I already prepared my drawings. Um, if you haven't yet, that's fine. Feel free to go ahead and work on your drawing uh, during um, today's live stream. But I pulled them out of my block already. So I'm gonna set my block aside so I have more room to kind of go over the process of drawing and painting. So I'm going to be working on this a little bit more in depth just to show you, uh, you know, kind of working with graphite before you add the watercolor. But I do also have one that is a little bit more developed that I added some more uh, pencil and value to. So I want to kind of, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the first part because um, we're going to be combining watercolor and graphite. When you're mixing two different mediums, um, there's just a couple of things to keep in mind. I wrote about this in our weekly tip um, this week on mix, um, but if you didn't get a chance to read it, because I know it was a little bit longer, I'm going to kind of bring up a lot of that stuff again in today's live stream. So I went through this drawing, and this is using um, graphite pencils to get a variety of value here. So I did my sketch using the Krita Color um, the HB. The HB stands for hard black. Um, this is kind of in the middle of uh, a really um, light pencil and a dark pencil. This is going to be like your middle range pencil. If you've ever uh, worked with like a, you know, a writing pencil, those yellow, the green and yellow Ticonderoga pencils, they're usually HB pencils. Um, so they're, they're really good because they're kind of in the middle of um, you can get really light sketches and you can get a little bit more value. Um, so I actually went through and did this area just kind of lightly filled in with this pencil where I have these middle tones on my drawing. Um, and then I went in with a 2B pencil um, and that's where I got this darker uh, sort of uh, gray value and tone here. So the 2B, um, that's the B stands for blackness, it just means it's a softer pencil. Um, it has uh, more graphite in it, so it, you're going to get a darker uh, shade. So that's why the sets are nice, because um, a tip I have for if you're working with uh, watercolor um, and graphite together, um, when you're doing a drawing underneath of your watercolor, you don't want to press too hard on your paper because it will leave grooves in the paper that can be a little difficult to paint over top of. Um, but the other reason is um, if you press too hard and add too much graphite to your paper, um, if you've ever used graphite and pressed really hard to the point where it almost embosses your paper down um, and kind of flattens it out in the spot that you colored on, um, that is going to create uh, almost like a, a resist um, because it's it has a little bit of a, an oil or grease to it. Um, so your watercolor might bead on that area. So you don't want to press too hard. Um, and it can be nice to have a softer pencil to get a darker value. So that's all to kind of um, explain a little bit of my setup. But I am going to go over um, just using less graphite. So if you don't want this much value or detail, that's fine too. Um, but before I uh, go over to my other drawing um, that I 
uh, am less finished with. I'm going to take my angle brush here and I'm just dipping it into clear water. Um, so I don't have any paint uh, yet, um, but I'm actually going to kind of start to wet my paper. Um, and I'm going to set it aside to allow it to dry. And there are two reasons for why I'm doing this. So the first reason, and it's a pretty good practice in general with watercolor paper, most of the time, especially with paper like this that comes on a block, um, it's the paper is already pretty taut and it's not going to buckle when you add a lot of water. However, um, if you are working on watercolor paper that is maybe not on a block or is just a single sheet that uh, you purchased without being in a paper pad at all, um, you get more buckling when you add water. So this uh, technique is called stretching your watercolor paper. Um, and basically you're getting the fibers ready to absorb water by adding just a layer of water to the paper already. Um, you can do this technique uh, if you're adding a tone of watercolor on, on top of your paper as well, but we're just starting with clean water uh, to help stretch the paper. And the second reason is we're kind of sealing our graphite onto the paper. You'll notice I'm being a little careful over some of the more um, filled in areas with graphite. And that's because it will smear a little bit. Um, that graphite is going to get picked up by the wet brush. So I'm just taking some care um, not to swipe across the paper too um, roughly because it will pull. You can even see it. You might not be able to see it, but I can see it a little bit where it started to lift and pull a little. Um, but I'm trying just to to get it to soak into the fibers of the paper. So the reason that I'm this that this works um, to seal your graphite onto your paper is that when you get the paper wet, the graphite, the little uh, granules of graphite, start to sink into uh, the the fibers of the paper because they're getting softened and weakened a little. And so it's going to be a little bit harder to remove the graphite once it's been soaked into the paper. So that's kind of the trick. I, I actually don't mind the little areas where it's kind of softening and smudging a little bit. I, th I think that looks kind of nice. Um, and it I think it helps to unify the image a little bit. So that's just my my preference, though. If you have a bigger brush also, that's uh, you can use that too if you don't want to use a, a little brush because you'll cover more area of the paper more quickly. So I'm going to let this sit aside in the meantime and it's going to dry. And this paper is amazing because it's so absorbent. Um, I feel like it dries pretty quickly, which seems counterintuitive, but I found that it soaks up a lot of the water so it's not sitting on top and the, the top of the paper dries really quickly, which is very nice. Um, so that drawing that I showed you just now that I was sealing to the paper has um, a little bit more of a, a range of values. So it has um, lights and middle uh, tones and darks, but you don't have to add that much um, to your to your drawing before you add the watercolor. So I'm just gonna go in and kind of add just a little bit of uh, value to this drawing, but I'm not gonna go really in depth, just a little bit, enough to sort of show where the light and dark areas will be. Because you have the option, and this was something I, I tried to explain in the article that I wrote for the mix group is that when you do a graphite drawing under your watercolor painting, um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, so you can choose to 
just do a really light sort of graphite drawing um, that doesn't have a whole lot of details or values underneath, um, but it's going to come through your watercolor painting um, pretty clearly because most watercolor paints are transparent. There are some that are a little more opaque, but for the most part, they're going to be transparent. So anything that's on the layer underneath is going to start to show through um, your painting. So the nice thing about having your values underneath of your painting before you add the paint is that the values are already there for you. So rather than having to build up as many uh, washes of paint, you can just add a nice thin layer of color on top of the values that are already there. And then you'll already have a nice value range. It's a little less mixing involved. Um, and this is also a really awesome way if you are someone who's comfortable with drawing um, but you're maybe not as uh, practiced with using watercolor, but you're trying to kind of make that transition um, and figure out how to use watercolor um, in a way that that is related to something that you're already familiar with. So the cool thing about using graphite is that you're building up values. Um, you can build them up from light to dark by adding layers. Um, of of graphite to your paper. Um, you're also trying to preserve the white of your paper. And those are that's also how you approach watercolor painting. So you're using the white of your paper. Um, you're trying to preserve those highlights there. You are building up layers of value and color um, with your paints. And so it's a very similar approach and it's a really good bridge. Um, and these materials play pretty well together aside from a couple little quirks um, that you'll, you'll discover the more you play with them. So I'm just sort of building it up just a little bit, but I'm not going quite as um, as detailed as I did with the other one. This is more just to kind of give a little bit more of like a base layer to it, but I'll fill it in with, um, with paints more. So I'm gonna set this one aside um, and I'll come back into this one if we're waiting for the other one to dry. But I just wanted to, to kind of show you how you can do a drawing on the watercolor paper. Um, it doesn't have to be any one particular way. And this is a really simple way to kind of add a little more to your sketch underneath without having to do a whole lot, um, but it will still come through your painting. So that's the first part of this project. So if you want, um, if you're working uh, on just a, a sheet of paper, um, you can also tape it down. Um, I probably will not tape mine down, but um, it'll kind of help keep your paper flat. Um, I'm getting a little bit of warping because I got the paper wet um, and it's still drying. So if that uh, bothers you, you can absolutely just tape down your paper and that will help hold it a little bit more flat. Um, so now I'm going to grab my paints and I'm just going to kind of have them sitting. Let me see. Let me find a good spot to sit them. I think let's do this. I want you to be able to kind of see how I'm grabbing my paint, but also how I'm putting it on the paper. So just give me one second just to arrange this this way. I think this will work nicely. Okay. So um, I think for me, I personally like to work with hot press paper. Um, so I just wanted to point out that the 
texture of this paper, the finish of this paper is really smooth. Um, so it's easier to draw with graphite on this type of paper. But I do want to quickly just show that you can do it on cold press paper. But I want to show you what it looks like when you use um, a pencil on something that's a little more textured. So it is going to lay on the paper, but because of the, the tooth of the paper, you're going to see a little bit more of the texture come through. That's not a bad thing, but it is something to be aware of uh, depending on what you want your outcome to be. And the more uh, rough the surface of your paper is, the more that's going to come through with your graphite. So if you want something that looks a little more smooth, um, hot press paper is going to be the way to go. Um, but if you don't mind heavy texture, cold press paper will work with this as well. Um, it's just going to be something that might uh, be a little more challenging for you to work with, depending on um, how smooth you want your graphite to look underneath. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, once you have your drawing on the paper, then you can start adding washes on top. Um, so I'm going to mix, I think, um, kind of a, like a light brown color because, let me just pull up my reference here. Um, the brown or the um, sort of feathers that are here on this bird are a really light brown and they're actually very close to the stick. Um, there's just a little more desaturated, meaning that they're a little paler. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this. This is the um, transparent brown oxide. Put some of that over here. But it's a little too red for what I want. So I'm going to uh, neutralize it a little bit by adding a cool color. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that. I think I need a little more of both. So if you're ever trying to neutralize a color or desaturate it a little bit, um, a good rule of thumb is to add its opposite on the color wheel. Um, so that can be a really helpful way to make an adjustment to a particular color um, if you need to, to mix it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start laying in a light wash of color. And you should be able to see that my graphite is still showing through this wash of color. And I'm kind of putting the wash down following the direction of the feathers so that the brush strokes are lining up with the pencil strokes that I have. And these angle brushes are nice because you can get a nice flat, uh, wide brush stroke, and then you can rotate it and get some really thin, detailed uh, brush strokes in there as well. Now, um, the your paintbrush is going to pick up a little bit of the graphite. Um, it's just the nature of mixing the two mediums together. So my advice would be to, after you finish uh, adding in a wash of color in a particular area, to wash off your brush and then wipe it off before you add more color so that you aren't uh, cross-contaminating the graphite into your paint and not changing the color of the paint that you that you just mixed because it is going to add a little bit of a gray to it. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind so that it doesn't affect your your colors too much. And it can also save you a little frustration. <laughs> So you can see from just this first wash of color, I might not add um, another layer because I like this 
um, tone of this light brown color. Um, and it's also a light color, so I don't want to add too much to it because it's going to make it more dark and intense. So I think that this is, is looking good, but I wanted to point out how you can see my pencil marks underneath. Um, so it's almost like um, sort of if you were working with markers or something that was preserving the, the color, not the colors, the drawing underneath, um, anything that's kind of transparent, you're just filling in the color, uh, but really what's coming through is that drawing. So uh, the color's just sort of sitting on top of your drawing from there. So next I'm going to add, um, I'm actually going to go in to this because I've already mixed, although I need to mix a little more, um, this brown color here. So I'm going to take a little more of the transparent brown oxide. I'm going to grab a bit. I think the trickiest thing um, that I've noticed working with the pans is just making sure you scoop up enough of the pigment from the pan. So you might have to, to do a couple swipes across your pan to really get some of that paint off. Uh, and that might mean that you get it wet with your brush and then dry off your brush and kind of scrape up some of the pigment because it can be really easy to get a very watered down pigment if you are uh, adding too much water. So just something to keep in mind. So I added a little bit more blue this time, so it is a little darker. But I got a nice dark brown. And the thing also, just to keep in mind, is that um, you don't have to be perfectly matching your reference image. So the reference image, it's a little bit of a lighter brown, but you can be creative and adjust those colors however you want. And if you want it to be a blue bird, you can totally change the color altogether. So it's up to you kind of how you want to do it because it's your artwork and your piece. So um, that's what makes it so fun to be an artist. You get to be creative with this kind of stuff. You don't have to be like a camera getting everything perfectly accurate to what you see in front of you. I'm just using the tip of the angle brush here to get this little detailed spot. So if you have small areas, you can either switch to using your detail brush or you can do what I do and just use the detail sort of tip of your angle brush. This combination of materials is also really awesome for if you're ever out doing, it's called plein air, which is when you go outside and draw or sketch or paint from nature or life um, outside. This is awesome for that if you're doing urban sketching, like if you're out uh, in a city and you're, you know, let's just say at a cafe, sitting at a table outside and sketching, um, or if you're in a neighborhood sketching houses, something like that. Um, these are awesome for that because they're super portable. Um, and you can go in and do really loose, quick sketches with your pencil. Go in and add some quick washes of color uh, just to kind of capture what you're seeing around you. Um, and it's really easy to, you know, put everything into a pencil pouch. Actually, the these pencil pouches are really nice. Um, these little Art Snacks uh, travel pouches. This would be great. Oh, these are, I have two of these Creative Color pencils. I'm wondering what I did with it. Um, these are really great for something like if you wanted to do um, outdoor sketching. Um, you could fit. You could totally fit your little or watercolor palette in here in the pocket. You could fit a brush. You could fit a couple pencils. 
um, erasers, that kind of thing. It's like a really nice travel kit. Um, so this, this would be great uh, materials to take, even if you have a little tiny sketchbook that would fit in there too. Um, so that would be a really nice way to take your watercolors on the road um, and get some practice with drawing, sketching and painting um, out in the world. But um, yeah, there's an artist who I really like. Um, actually, I'm very lucky I got to meet him when I was an undergrad in college. Um, he's well known for the Dinotopia books. His name's James Gurney. Um, and he's awesome. He's a really nice man. Um, and he uh, does really beautiful sketches of, I want to say he lives in either Virginia or Pennsylvania, somewhere kind of, or something like that, somewhere not far from me. Um, but he does these really amazing oil paintings and he'll do studies, which is like a, a study is like a quick sketch um, that you do out in before you you do a more finished painting so he'll do studies of um, houses and parks people all kinds of stuff and he often will use graphite and watercolor together um, for the reason I just mentioned that it's super portable you can work really quickly you can add a lot of detail or work really loose um, and it's super easy to take with you out into the world. So he's a he's a good person to look at. Um, he has a blog too, which is really nice if you're just uh you know on on the internet maybe um you know you have some downtime. He's got really great art tips uh, to look at. Um, so but he has an, a nice uh, article that I read writing about. Um, using graphite and watercolor together with some good examples. Okay. You can see it's coming together. And I think what I really like about this technique is the amount of texture that you get um, with see, being able to see the pencil underneath. I really love when I can see the materials uh, in a, a painting or drawing because um, to me, it just kind of shows the artist's hand in the work. And I think that's really nice. Um, I, I love being able to kind of sort of, uh, I guess, investigate how the artist might have done the painting or drawing by looking at their marks and how they applied the materials to the paper. And I think that's something that's really nice uh, with combining materials that really show a lot of texture. So I've been a little more uh, neat with my painting, just kind of filling in the space, but you could absolutely do bigger, broader washes um, and you could be really loose with your painting. Um, I also did a pretty tight pencil drawing, but there's no reason why you couldn't really um, get loose with with your uh, um, sketches and watercolor. So I'm just going to do a quick little aside. I'm going to let that dry a little more before I add the next layer next to another painted part. Um, but you could, if you took your pencil and you kind of um, grip it closer to the end, I, I rest it against different parts of my hand. So I have the back kind of touching my palm. I wrap my fingers around it. And then I use my thumb and forefinger to be able to press down. And I'm using sort of the side of the graphite here. And you can get wider um. I guess, strokes of the graphite. Um, you know, you could get really detailed. Um, if you're doing a sketch, you could do really broad lines like that um, on the side. Um, often you'll see uh, artists will shave down a lot of the wood so that they get a nice um, long piece of lead so that they can do this technique of getting a, a broad um, line from their pencil. Um, so you could definitely do something like that with your, your graphite application. And then you could get a nice big wash of color and just kind of fill in 
different areas like that. The other thing, and I'm going to let this dry for a second. The other thing you can do um, is you don't have to work in that order. So I'm just going to put down this wash of color and I'm going to let it dry. But what you could do is if you don't do your drawing first, you could tone your paper with uh, a certain color. It could be light. Um, I would recommend something that is not too dark just so that you can draw on top of it. Um, but anything that's like a yellow or um, a brown, burnt sienna, um, or like blue, anything that's kind of a light wash of color, you can put that down first and then draw on top of that. And that will look really nice as well. Um, so I'll let that dry and we'll come back to that. Hopefully I, I won't get uh, distracted talking about something else and then forget it until the end. Um, but uh, what's really nice about that is um, you're, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I have a totally white piece of paper in front of me, I feel a little overwhelmed by the amount of possibility. It can be a little scary to make that first mark on your paper. The cool thing about putting down a, a wash of color on top is that you've already made a mark on the paper. You've already kind of gotten started. Uh, so it takes away a little bit of that feeling of, okay, I'm going to I'm going to get started. I'm going to put the mark down on the paper. Um, you, you already kind of started to treat the paper and, and add something to it. Um, so that's a good way to get a painting started. Um, if you're, or a drawing started, I should say, you are, you know, trying to combine your watercolor and um, drawings together. That's another good way to do it. So like I said, there's no one right way to do it. You can really approach it with whatever works the best for you and what it is that you're trying to achieve with your, your painting. Okay, so I mixed up a green um, because in the background, there's kind of a hint of green back here. Um, I purposefully left this a little more abstracted because the photograph um, uses uh, a really like strong depth of field. So um, it's really blurry in the background. So the details are not as important. And I thought that this was a really nice opportunity uh, to just use the watercolor to paint in some loose, uh, broad washes of color without having to be too worried about the detail. And I want this to be a little bit more watery. So I'm just going to add a little more on here because it's blurry. So we're not, we're not worried about getting details or sharp edges, anything like that. My green's a little more vibrant than what we have in the photo. The photo is a little more of like a bluish sort of, uh, I guess like a, a, almost a teal green, but maybe I'm just ready for spring, <laughs> but I kind of mix something that's a little, a little warmer. And then a trick you can do if you want your edges softer is I just washed off my brush and dried it off on my paper towel and I dipped it in my clean water. I dried it off just a smidge so it's not sopping wet. I'm going to take my damp brush and start to pull the edges out a little bit like this. And this is a good trick to soften your edges. You're lifting up the pigment and then uh, letting it blur out a little more. And I just repeat the process because you're going to pick up paint as you do this. So wash off my brush, dry it off, dip it into my clean water, and then let it, uh, and then wipe it off again. So that's my trick for that. And you can see I have a little bit more of a, a soft edge there. So I have some of this dark gray sort of mixed up. So I'm going to gray it out a little more. And I'm going to do wet into wet here. Have a little 
uh, paint still on my brush. I didn't do a very good job washing it out, but that's okay. Because luckily, it's the same temperature. Um, it's cool, so it won't look too strange adding that layer on top. Oh. I'm so focused. I didn't even notice that I was off the camera. So I'll move that over a little bit so you can see. I'm going to do the same with just softening my edges here. Amelia, this is Lee. Looks looking really good. Thanks. Uh, just a little time check. We're about halfway through. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. All right. So the fun thing about this background is that it's really abstract. Um, so you can, again, it's one of those things where you don't have to worry too much about getting the details perfectly right. Just kind of hinting that there's something going on in the background a little bit. So I'm just finding some of those colors and putting them down on here. And I think that's a nice thing about combining a, a watercolor painting with a graphite drawing is that some things are a little more challenging to do with uh, graphite, I think. Um, for me personally, getting those really sort of soft abstract shapes has always been a little more of a challenge to me um, because when I'm using graphite pencils, um, I, I tend to want to add a lot of detail because they're so, um, the points are so fine and you can get a lot of detail with pencils. Um, but the beautiful thing about watercolors is that you can get um, less detail and some really nice soft uh, washes of color. So this is a great combination for that reason too, is that um, you know, you can sort of oscillate between areas that have a lot of detail and then areas that are a little bit more abstracted and don't have as much detail in them, which I think is really nice. So I think I need to mix up a little more of my brown for here. So I'm just taking a little more of the transparent brown oxide. A little blue. I think I added a little too much blue. Grab a little more of that. And go in and see. I did add just a little bit of a guide for myself uh, with with a couple pencil lines, um, but I kept them really light uh, because I wasn't so worried about having the lines, more just knowing where, kind of mapping out the shapes a little bit and where I wanted them to go. There is another bird in the background, but I think I'm just going to leave that out of my drawing um, because I don't really want to have uh, the dark value in the back from that bird. Um, so I'm just going to leave it out in mine. But you can put it in if you like. You could also just leave the entire background out if you wanted to. You don't have to add all these details. 
up to you. It's just kind of meant to look like there's some uh, foliage in the the background. Oh, I guess just the sticks. There's just some shapes back there. Kind of gives the bird a sense of place without um, having to really define it too much. And I'm not really overthinking this part. I'm just kind of, like I said, allowing it to be abstract, um, filling in some areas of color. I go back in and, and add a little more over here. I see that, uh, thank you, Lee, for putting in the link to James Gurney's website. That's awesome, thank you. Yeah, it's it's definitely a really great resource for um, art tips, but also a good spot for inspiration if you're just looking for more artists to look at and learn from. He's really cool. I'm just going to soften the light a little. And just remember from, I don't know if, if everyone has read, um, I wrote about watercolor blooms. Um, and that can happen when there's too much water uh, in one particular area. So if you're going back over um, an area with a wet brush, just be aware you might get those watercolor blooms. Um, and you might need to do a couple layers with that. I feel like I was starting to get a couple on there. But they can look really pretty. Um, I, I like them sometimes. It just depends on, I guess, what you want your final painting to look like. So if you want that little bit of texture to it, um, you know, you can allow that to sort of be in the background. But um, if you don't want the texture, then you'll probably want to just try not to have too much water in your on your uh, brush when you go back over. I'm gonna let the background dry a little bit and then I'm gonna go in. And so some of these areas where I have added the darker uh, graphite, I do wanna go over with a really light wash of watercolor because I want, it looks like it has a bit of a bluish tone to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of that. So I'm just gonna grab a little blue and I'm going to mix it with this. Um, this is the Payne's gray. I'm just going to mix a little bit of that to make it a little less vibrant. And I'm going to use a really watered down wash of this. And so I'm just going to go in and kind of go over some of the spots, especially the areas where it's really dark. And there are some more shadows. Even a light wash can become pretty powerful because you'll have that graphite underneath. So just uh, try not to have too much pigment here 
Um, otherwise, it will really cover up your graphite. But if you don't mind that, that's okay too. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a cool uh, blue to help balance out the warm uh, feathers here. And hopefully you can kind of see how that's already kind of uh, making the feathers stand out a little bit more than where I, what they looked like before. And I'm kind of painting, again, I'm sort of just following the direction that I used my sketch lines with or my drawing lines. And if you want, you can go in and add a little, I'm just going to add a tiny bit in here because this is a little bit darker. It looks like this bird has maybe some dark feathers underneath the light ones. So I'm just going to go in and add a couple of really light marks with my blue to help bring that out a little bit. just a little bit down where there's some shadows too. Grab a little more paint. And I'm going to add some to around the eye, although the eye is almost black. I do think it will help to make it a little darker. Watercolor, uh, as we know, will dry a little bit lighter than when it's first applied. So um, it might look particularly dark when you first add it, but it will dry a little more. So, or it will dry a little later. So don't worry too much about that, but it'll look extra dark where you have the graphite. So just be aware that it will look darker than expected. Um, if you aren't a huge fan of the texture of the paper coming through the graphite and you want it to look really smooth, adding watercolor will also help with that um, because it lifts some of the graphite off the paper and smooths it out a little, but it also fills in those gaps where there's more of the white of the paper coming through. So that's helpful, I think, in that regard, if that's your preference. And then I'm going to add a little to the foot too, because it's a this is pretty close to the value of it, but I feel like now that I've added some blue to the other areas that I think that'll help make it look more cohesive. I'm just adding couple more little details. So I'm going to set this aside for a moment and uh, come back to my little scrap paper just to show you um, sort of working on top of this is dried now. So um, you could do a sketch, draw another little little bird beard. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up either. So you could also do where it almost like looks a little bit like it's misregistered, like uh, on printers when the colors didn't quite line up on all the layers.
Here's a really quick little scribbly bird. But you can see, so this is kind of the opposite effect where before we had that our graphite was coming up through the watercolor. Now we have the watercolor coming up through the graphite. And again, like I was saying before, you know, you have kind of that the white of the paper that comes through. Now you'll have a toned uh, color that will come through your graphite where there's gaps from the texture of the paper. Um, so, you know, you kind of have that play between the two. So the difference also between working in this order, other than, um, so when you work with graphite first, your drawing gets sealed into the paper. So once it's on there, it becomes a lot more difficult to erase. So I already kind of did that over on these areas. So I can kind of show you where I went over it with watercolor. It will erase. Actually, I think I just put that on there. Um, oh my goodness. Sometimes I get too, too uh, enthusiastic with my erasing. So it will erase, but it's a little harder to erase um, because it's, um, like I said, it's like in the fibers of the paper. So you're going to get more of you can kind of see where in the middle it erased more cleanly than where I went over it with watercolor. So it's a little more challenging to remove off the paper, but when you have already painted the paper, it's dry, and then you're drawing on top, it's way easier to erase. So you can more cleanly erase your drawing when you do it in this order. And then you can go over top of it with more watercolor if you want. Um, but it just depends on, I guess, what you want out of your painting again. So if you have a drawing, you're really, really happy with it, you know you're not going to make any more adjustments, and you drew it on your paper, uh, you can add a wash of color and seal everything on. Or you can do what I did earlier and just add a wash of just plain water, and that's going to help seal the drawing onto the paper. It's less likely that it's going to move. Um, and uh, you'll be able to, to add layers on top and work with your drawing more. It's not going to go anywhere. But if you want to add in a wash of color and then add a drawing on top that you can still manipulate before you do anything else to it, um, then it's a good idea to start with your watercolor wash first, let that dry, and then add your pencil on top. So um, a couple different ways to uh, consider combining graphite and watercolor together. Um, but, you know, you really want to think about how you approach um, when you add the, um, the materials in what order. So we'll set this one aside, but we can go back to this other one that I was working on. So I didn't seal this onto the paper like I did with the other one. Um, but maybe we can try doing something that's a little bit more loose and playful and maybe not as um, tight of a sketch. So we have, you know, a little bit more of a loose uh, background back here, but this is a little more um, deep or this is a little less detailed. So maybe now we can go in and just kind of play around with adding big washes of watercolor. So. I have this this angle brush. If this is all that you have, this can work, but I'm actually gonna, just for the, the sake of showing you another approach, I'm gonna use a little bit of a bigger brush. Um, and I'm just gonna play around with adding some water and uh, big washes of color. So this is like a little bit more, if maybe we were out and about in nature and we were just kind of, working loosely, this might be another approach that you might take. And you can do stuff that's a little more abstract as well. And I kind of like the um, sort of the play between when you have stuff that's really detailed and then you have things that are a little more loose. So this might be kind of a fun way to play around with that. And this time, let's just try adding some some color that is maybe not true to what we see um, in in our reference picture. Let's just add some color for fun. 
So this is considered the wet and wet technique. So I got my paper wet already and I'm just dabbing some color in and letting it flow however it wants to go on the paper. I'm adding a little, making my sort of cooler brown because I still want that same kind of brown, but I'm just go in and do some loose sweeping shapes. A little green. I'm kind of mixing the green and brown to make it look a little more like there's uh, blurry trees and sticks in the background. This time I'm making it more of a spring scene than a winter scene. Just changing it up a little. It's getting really kind of loose. I'm just kind of letting it be really messy and washy sort of in the background. And then what, you know, you could do is go in with either graphite or more watercolors and then add in a little more detail if you wanted to do something like that. Because you don't have to pick one, I guess, order of how you put the watercolor and pencil on the paper. You can definitely go back and forth with it and sort of allow the watercolor layers to dry, go back in, add more detail. You could also add in um, some colored pencils or if you have water-soluble crayons or water-soluble pencils, you could get even more of this sort of loose, uh, this combination of loose and tight painting and drawing. Um, so you could definitely experiment with that and just kind of see what happens. I'm kind of making it look a little more like a chickadee or something. But I kind of don't mind the colors all sort of blending into each other. I think that's kind of fun to be a little bit more loose. And that's kind of the nice thing too about not starting out with a ton of value or detail in your drawing um, before you add the watercolor because then it kind of also lets you be really loose with the watercolor um, and there's not a lot going on underneath. Uh, you can sort of, like I was saying, go back and forth, start to build that detail as you go um, so that you know, you, you're not planning everything out right at the start. You're kind of allowing some room for spontaneity and maybe you decide you want to change things up halfway through. I feel like that's kind of how I like to work is 
I'll often go in with a plan, but um, not always. Sometimes I just kind of have a general idea or as I'm working, I'll start to make some discoveries and think, oh, actually, I like this better. Um, so it's kind of nice when you can give yourself the flexibility to change part of the way through. It's really nice, I think. Okay, so I've kind of like added just a messy layer of color on here. Um, I'm going to let it dry for a little bit and then we'll come back to this one and maybe um, tighten it up a little bit with some detail. So we can come back to this drawing and maybe we can kind of do the same thing here. Just go in with some pencil and add a little more detail here. And I know there's some snow in the background, but I almost feel like I kind of want to put a light wash of something just to kind of unify these spaces a little. So I might do that. Maybe just a really, like a, a very light blue wash. That might look good. Let me try adding some of that. Let's just see how it looks. I'm going to do it from this direction so you can see, but also I can hold it flat. It's going to go across and add this flat wash, but I do think I'm going to leave the bird the way it is. So I don't think I'm going to add a wash to that. So I'm just going to kind of go around it. So you can see I'm, it's a really, really light, thin wash, but I do think it's kind of helping to bring all these colors together. So you can also try this out if you like, um, but I'm using a very, very watered down wash. So if you're gonna do the same thing and you want it to look really light, um, just make sure you have a good amount of water in there to help. Um, disperse the pigment a little more and be aware that you might lift up a little bit of your painting underneath because I started to do that but I'm okay with that because my background is meant to be more abstract and not too detailed the colors are going to kind of blend into each other so I'm not worried about that but you might not always want that to be the case do you think that made a difference with that so if you ever find that you just feel like you want to kind of bring your colors together a little bit more um, I do think adding like a really light wash over top can be really helpful for that um, to kind of help bring everything together I think it's looking great. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's coming together. So I'm just going to kind of come back to this one. It's still a little damp, but I think it's dry enough that I can keep going. Um, so I'm just going to work on this for another couple of minutes. And then I think we'll probably be able to take a look at what everybody else is working on. 
So we'll give this a little more painting and a little more attention and then we can see what you guys are up to. So for this next phase, I'm just gonna add a little bit more uh, detailed washes. So the first layer was really loose and just kind of splotchy. And then I'm going to go in and add some layers that are a little more uh, detail oriented. see a comment from Jessica um, saying that you appreciate seeing the different approaches. So yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad that it's helpful. Um, I think that when we're learning new techniques or maybe being introduced to something we haven't tried before, um, at least for me, when I'm learning how to do anything, I kind of want to make sure I'm doing it right. But when it comes to art, like there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do something. They're just I think ways that will make it either a little easier or you'll feel more successful with the outcome. But I mean, you always just have to experiment to see what what works the best for you. Um, so I'm glad that learning a couple of different ways that you can try it out so that you can figure it out was really helpful. So that's good. And I'll be curious, um, you can either share it today or later on in mix, if uh, you you know if you have a preference for working a little bit more uh, with details or if you prefer to do a really loose sketch and just be really loose with your approach rather than um, working with a lot of details. Um, I learned about myself just from making art for a long time that I love doing really um, tight detailed drawings, um, but I've been working on uh, loosening them up because I think it's good to have a balance of both. Um, so I, I wanna have more of a balance with my work so that sometimes it's detailed, but I know when to make it a little more loose. Actually, I'm having so much fun just doing this really sort of unplanned loose um, painting of this bird. I think it's it's actually looking really cool. Yeah, I think it's looking great. It's got a good like, um, almost like a haze around the bird, which is almost like a soft focus. Thanks, yeah, I agree. So we have about 10 minutes left. We have Jenny, Jessica, Julie, um, Nina, if you guys uh, want to share uh, what you're working on, doesn't have to be exactly what Amelia has been demonstrating today, but anything, any questions, feel free to uh, unmute yourself or turn your camera on. We can see what you guys are working on. or not, <laughs> totally fine. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see what everyone's working on, but it's also okay if you just wanted to watch today, or maybe if you wanna share something on um, Mix later, that's okay too. I always love to see stuff on there.
Oh, great. So I see Jessica was saying um, that she'll share later. She's working on a, a sparrow that lives on her porch each winter. That is so cool. I can't wait to see it. I feel like the second approach that uh, I'm doing where I just kind of really loosely filled everything in, now I'm going back in with more detail, was a real trust the process moment because I wasn't really sure how, how it might come out, but I'm actually really happy with how this looks and how it's looking and turning out. So, you know, when it comes to art, just trust the process. Just let yourself try something different and you never know, you might discover something really fun. I think I'm going to try this in the future uh, when I do my watercolor paintings. Just, you know, kind of do like a really messy, blobby sort of first wash and then go in and add details later. I love this little detail brush uh, for doing almost like drawings as if you were drawing with a brush pen. Um, it's, it's really fun and you get a nice variety in your line work, meaning you get a variation between how thick or thin the line is. Um, I've seen some, uh, I really like to read graphic novels and comics. And I've seen some artists who do some really amazing stuff with, they do all their line work with a little brush like this. I think it's really cool. Um, and something else I wanna try more with my own artwork. So I think this is really cool. And um, I wanna point out a couple of things that I'm just observing as I work on it. So I think, you know, you can see the, the little bit of graphite texture underneath and you can kind of get a sense of the value of like the lightness and darkness of this little bird from where I started. But um, the difference between these two is that this is more about the drawing um, so it's more about like that I did a graphite drawing underneath and got like a really nice sort of um, realistic like light and dark drawing and then added just a couple washes of color just to tone it and add a little color to the drawing um, that already exists and kind of stands on its own. However, with this, it's a little more about the painting. Um, so, you know, I, I did my drawing first added a little bit of pencil texture and sort of suggested where I wanted my lights and darks to go, as well as some of the detail of the outline of the bird and where um, some of that detail is going to go, but then got really loose with the painting. And it's really more about where I'm adding in uh, the different colors, um, some different washes of color, allowing the colors to blend into each other. Um, so this, I think, is kind of what I was getting at in the beginning. Um, and I'm glad that it's becoming a little more clear of how you can use graphite and watercolor together in a couple of different ways. And it really just depends on you as an artist, how you like to work, if you like to work a little bit more with details and having things look a little bit more tightly rendered, or if you're somebody who likes to work a little bit more loosely, you're more about working intuitively and just kind of seeing what happens when you put materials down on the paper and allowing them to kind of come through the drawing. Both are fantastic approaches. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, and I hope that uh, if you haven't tried using um, watercolor and graphite together before, that this is something that you'll um, try out and um, see what kind of results that you get uh, or maybe make some discoveries about what kind of artist you are and how you like to work um, 
or maybe things that you know you didn't think you liked until you tried it and then it turns out that you love it um i think that this is like a really nice nice way to try it out and again if you're new to watercolors i think that this is a good way to um sort of bridge the gap between something that's a little more familiar like drawing with pencils and learning how to to start incorporating paint into your work That's great. Yeah, I love this. Thanks. I'm going to do more paintings of birds like this now. Put a bird on it. Yeah, exactly. See, that Portlandia was telling us all along, just put a bird on it. There's, a, there's an artist that I like, uh, Mike Mitchell. Have you heard of him? I haven't, no. So he has, he does a lot of wild stuff um a lot of his work is uh drawn digitally but mm -hmm. it looks like it's painted Ooh, that's uh, cool. and he has a series of birds called the fat bird series and it's literally <laughs> all these different um bird species different types of birds but they're like plump and round <laughs> adorable yeah let me see if i can find the link and i'll put it in the chat. yeah definitely want to check i own out. a couple of the fat birds in my like we have like a back room we get a yes. lot of in our yard so it's like a back room and I have three uh pieces of them. that is so cool yeah let's see if i can yes oh i think there's a whole pinterest board about fat birds yeah, <laughs> yes yep i'll put the bender sword great thanks Cold fat birds we can add it in um the mix group too they're kind of funny yeah i mean they're really well done it's just like they're really fat birds <laughs> cute i'll take a look at it um after the live stream yeah it's so good Yeah, so the level of detail that he has is like, it, it reminds me very similar to what you're working on in terms of like the way that the feathers are, you know, uh, they're subtle, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the why that their feathers. That's fun. Yeah, he's a little out there, a little wild kind of dude, but he's like, you know what? People seem to be buying all these birds. So I'm going to just make a whole series of these fat birds. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, great. But he does, he's done, he does like pre orders. So he'll do mm -hmm. one digital and then he'll be like, you have five days to pre order. And then after the pre order, like he won't print it again. And so, oh, wow. Yeah. That's a, that's supply and demand. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But also, like, um, the art is really good. So. Yes, definitely, definitely. Makes it special. Yeah. The, a limited number. That's really cool. Yeah, I have a feeling uh, you're going to really dig his art because it's like yeah. the the quality and like the the way that they're depicted. It's like, okay, this is like, like you're a really good artist, but you're being silly about it. Yes, I love that. <laughs> You're not taking it too seriously, like uh, like a Renaissance portrait of a bird. It, it feels like it could be that, but it's also just like, that bird is overweight. <laughs> That's cute. I love that. Yeah, I think it's fun to just be silly with art and uh, just have fun with it. just yeah I'm just kind of ad-libbing I'm adding some moss and lichens to the to the branches adding a little green so yeah. great well um we can wrap up here okay um so final thoughts final things yeah just um if if uh 
the artists in the group or whoever's watching later, if you haven't tried um, mixing graphite and watercolor together, definitely uh, continue experimenting with it. If this was your first time trying it out, um, I'm glad that you were willing to do something different. Um, or if it's something you've tried, you haven't done in a while, um, good to revisit. But either way, thank you all for hanging out with us on this. For me, it's a dreary, rainy Sunday. So it was fun to get some time to create and hang out with cool artists. So thank you. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll see this playback up on next. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks, guys. Have a good weekend.